Hello there, my fellow noble pilots, and welcome back to our Gift That Keeps On Giving, aka the Imperial Knights lore series. As you may know, we're still working to cover the Imperial Knights great houses, with only two major ones left. For today, our topic will be the Proud House Cadmus. Like with the other great houses we talked about, we're gonna learn a bit about their history, their society, and unique quirks from their homeworld and culture. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? House Cadmus is an Imperial Knight House which formerly had strong ties to the Adeptus Mechanicus as part of the Questor Mechanicus, but now owes allegiance directly to the Imperium as a house of the Questor Imperialis. The remote world of Raysa was isolated from mankind for thousands of years, perched on the edge of the galaxy and staring off into the void. This sense of far frontier is brought home each night to the men and women of Raysa, when they look upon the sky and see one half glittering with stars and the other half a void of empty space. For centuries, only the knights protected the people of Raysa from the dark things that crawled, stalked, and slithered through its arboreal forests. And at night, even the nobles retreated to their fortresses, leaving the wilds to the creatures and other darker things. Most feared of the denizens of the dark Raysan woods were the so-called golems. Elemental creations of wood and stone, each golem was a tangle of sentient vines and trees, given life by strange energies of the void. With granite fists and obsidian talons, a golem was capable of punching through the carapace of a knight and tearing out the pilot. The only way to kill the golem was to rupture its stone heart, the living rock at its center in which the resonating energies that held it together dwelt. In a standard century-long conflict known as the Golem War, the knights hunted down and vanquished all the terrifying monsters, shattering the resonating spires from which they were birthed. It was from this war that Golem Keep, House Cadmus's ancestral home, earned its name, its thick granite walls constructed from the dead stone hearts of the slain creatures. With the golems gone, races of primitive abhumans flourished in the forests of Raysa. Though these were little match for the nobles astride their knights, in large numbers the creatures could threaten the houses and the provinces if left unchecked. At times, whole communities would disappear overnight to the depredations of the mutant, who would melt back into the forest before the vengeance of the nobles could find them. So it is that now, on Midsummer Eve, on each race and year, the nobles gather together at Golem Keep to take part in a great hunt known as the Cull. Born out of necessity, the Cull was at first a way for the nobles to ensure that nothing ever again challenged their mastery of Raysa, as the Golems had done in the past. The Abhumans were the primary target of the Cull. Though primitive, they would occasionally raid the edges of the plateau cities. Where these abhumans come from is unclear, but there are tales told by superstitious peasants that they are a distant offshoot of the original human settlers of Raysa during the Age of Technology, sharing a distant if dubious ancestry with the noble houses themselves. Whether there is any truth to this, it doesn't stop the nobles from calling their numbers. The cull has been undertaken for thousands of years, and it is at the core of race and society. In the early hunts, the nobles would crash through the forests in their nights, guns lighting up the shadowy paths and clearings as they cut down anything larger than a vine vole. At the end of the hunt, the nobles would recount their kills, though there was never any way of knowing how many actual abhumans had been killed due to their bodies being torn apart. Over time, the cull evolved and became more efficient, especially once alliance was made with the forge world of Gryphon 4. The use of sophisticated augers and bioscanners allowed the knights to detect the abhumans through kilometers of shrouded woodland, and kill counters were added to the knights to remove any doubt as to who reaped the greatest tally. 
Eventually, the call grew in such importance to become the means by which the ruling lord of the house, the High King, was chosen. This developed as a result of the favor bestowed upon the noble who claimed the most kills, and the subsequent influence he had on race and politics. The reasoning was to formalize this recognition by granting him lordship, with the understanding that it would last only for one year until the next call. For the last 32 years, Baron Roland of Swinford Hall has led the tallies of the cull, a feat which is unprecedented in all the annals of the event. The other nobles of Raysa have recently entered into a rare accord, questioning for the first time whether it is right that prowess in the culling of base humans should determine political might at all. To these dissenters, Baron Roland was heard to say that if they care so much about who has lordship, then they should be better in the cull. It is well that a leader of such experience is still in command, for the fighting strength of House Cadmus has suffered greatly against the Xeno's menace of High Fleet Leviathan. The nobles of House Cadmus have a reputation as peerless hunters, and there are few other night houses that can boast the same level of skill when it comes to running prey to ground. The development of hunting skills is a necessity in the wilderness of Raysa, and Cadman nobles are experts in controlling their knights in dense surroundings like jungle or woods. The thickly forested continents of House Cadmus' homeworld are the proving ground of the knights the huge green armored walkers crashing around the foliage and sending wildlife scurrying off in all directions. From above, the knights are difficult to distinguish, their adamantium plates blending in with the forest canopy, making them appear like the ominous shadows of undersea predators. Young nobles sometimes disappear for months, hunting in the woods of Raysa, taking with them only a small company of retainers and a favored sacristan. This can become a rite of passage of a kind, as the noble catalogues his skills and tries to outdo his peers by delving deeper into the wilds of the night world. Even in a night suit, there are places that fathers warn their sons not to go, though more often than not, this only makes the place more enticing. The Tangle is such a place, a briar patch of twisted trees and knotted undergrowth so thick it can snare a knight. Rumor has it that in the wake of the Golem Wars, not all of the monsters were slain, and some survived by fleeing into the furthest regions of Raysa. Some families believe that there is a nest of golems within the Tangle, and more than one young noble has tried to find the truth for himself. Such hunts usually end with the knights returning to Golem Keep, covered in mud and broken vegetation, but empty-handed. The stories they bring back do nothing to sate the nobility and only ensure that a new generation of nobles will take up the quest. Even when on campaign, House Cadmus will engage in hunts, forming what are informally known as hunting lances to track and kill local great beasts. On the death world of Dynak, Knights of House Cadmus aided the Catacan 217th in defeating a major assault by Eldar Corsairs, from the nearby Carrion Rift. After the Eldar had retreated, the nobles heard tales told by the Catacans of a great beast sighted deep within the swamp caverns of Dynak. The nobles immediately boarded their knights and set off on a hunt that would take them across the drenched surface of the world and down into the vast network of fetid sunken caverns. Eventually, the Cadman knights encountered a gigantic leech serpent, defeating the beast in a battle which lasted over one hour. The Catacan commander could only nod with approval and respect when the knights returned dragging the head of the monster. Raysa rests upon the edge of the known galaxy, with nothing but darkness staring back at it from the intergalactic void beyond. It is of little wonder then that it has suffered strange visitations from out of the veiled region. Over the centuries, there have been many phenomena recorded by House Cadmus, each encounter or event written carefully down in the Great Tome of Years. In the year of Dark Rain, millions of obsidian meteors came hurling out of the galactic void, crashing down into the jungles of Raysa. 
men foolish enough to try to drag the meteorite fragments back to their home, believing they were valuable, grew sick and died. Terrible black lesions covering their flesh. Eventually, House Cadmus decreed that the meteors were forbidden, and gathered together all they could find in their nights, sealing them in the depths of Golem Cave. However, those few men who looked upon the meteorites and lived whispered that they were covered in strange script and the crudely carved shapes of knights. During the year of the haunted worlds, a light fell out of the sky and landed deep in the woods of the Arborous Basin. That same night, the Baron left Golem Keep with a few men and took their knights down into the forest. Rumors among the servants of the keep tell of the Baron returning with a luminous casket of strange and alien design. Through its transparent lid, a willowy woman could be seen, slender of limb and fair of hair. The same servants say that the sleeping maiden was carried deep into the vault to be hidden among the most sacred treasures of House Cadmus. In the year of shrouded stars, a huge comet filled the skies of Rasa, wreathed in blue and white fire. As it passed near the night world, tiny burning stars broke off from the comet and fell through the atmosphere. As they fell into the forest, the stars resolved themselves into the broken wrecks of void ships, the comet itself an ancient and decaying space hulk. That year, the call hunted metal men and green-skinned xenos. Stories of the contents of Golem Cape have even reached the ears of the Inquisition. When Inquisitor Gromond took refuge on Rasa before traveling on into the Veiled Region, he casually asked Baron Roland about these whispers of alien objects. Roland's response was merely a smile across the feasting table and a gentle reminder to Gromond that he was a guest here and should not trouble himself with the words of peasants. The arboraceous night world of Reza undoubtedly inspired the bottle green of House Cadmus' livery. The knights are difficult to spot from above as they walk under a forest, an advantage they have utilized many times whenever facing invasion. When Baron Godfrey signed a concordat swearing House Cadmus fealty to the nearby forge world of Griffon IV in the early years of the 31st millennium, their coat of arms was changed to bear the cog of the ancient Mechanicum at its heart. They bore this symbol for the next ten millennia. However, the recent demise of Griffon IV beneath the onslaught of High Fleet Leviathan in 997 M41 has freed House Cadmus from their obligation to the Tech Priests. To the horror of Rhesus Sacristans, but to the delight of the noble families, Baron Roland has since reinstated the original heraldry of House Cadmus, replete with wings and the crest of a slain mutant. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the great hunters that are the members of House Cadmus. Is this great house among your favorite Imperial Knights factions? What do you like or dislike most about them? Let me know and discuss in the comments below. For those of you curious, the only house left to be covered in this mini-series is the Mechanicum Aligned House Crast. So that will be the next one you see. Was this video informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for future content. Thank you very much for watching and I wish you all a great day. The Emperor Protects.